Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Emirates Stadium as Arsenal welcome the eight-time European champions, Lyon, in match day five of the Women's Champions League in this crucial Group C match. Well, this is how uh, Group C is looking. Juventus currently beating Zurich 5-0. So at the moment, they are second in that Group C table. But because they are still playing, this is what it was beforehand. Uh, Arsenal then would still need a point to go through to the quarterfinals. Leon's fate would not be settled until Juventus visit them on Wednesday. Uh, interestingly enough as well, Juventus will have a better goal difference now because they are currently beating uh, Zurich 5-0. So that does mean Leon would trail them on goal difference if they were to draw against Arsenal tonight. So that would mean that Juventus uh, and Leon it would go down to that last game next week. If Leon win here tonight, they know a point will be enough on match day six to send them through. So the permutations are done and out of the way. Arsenal will want to avoid defeat to make sure they can get themselves through uh, to a 15th quarter final. And they have performed well in their Champions League campaign so far. They've collected 10 points from their four group games. They certainly laid down the marker after that thrashing against uh, Lyon 5-1. They also beat Zurich at 3-1-2. Well, the Sheffield United forward, Courtney Sweetman-Kirk is with me for this one. And Courtney, what can Arsenal take from that first meeting against Lyon and bring it into tonight? Look, it will give them a lot of confidence, the fact that not just beating Leon, but by that scoreline is no mean feat. I know at, at that point that you know, Leon had a, a lot of players out. So, you know, you're looking at the, the squad that Leon have put out today. It's a very different side that they will be facing. But nonetheless, I think Arsenal will be confident going to this. They're at home um, at the Emirates on the big stage and also having a, a good domestic campaign as well, which will, will give them confidence. Well, Leon have certainly recovered from that. A pretty demoralising 5-1 defeat to Arsenal back on match day one. They picked up seven points from their last three group games in the Champions League. They drew 1-1 with Juventus, but then uh, two victories over Zurich, which was a combined scoreline of 7-0, which means ahead of this uh, match week, they were second in that Group C. What will the uh, Leon mindset be, Courtney, coming into this game? I think it's initially, we, we heard some of the interviews before in terms of they know defensively they've got to be very good today. Arsenal have so many threats going forward and then obviously the other group game that's going on and for their own sake, they've got to be good going forward. They've got to be clinical. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going to be a very interesting matchup today, one I'm really looking forward to watching. It certainly will be. Here we go then. The two European heavyweights make their way out here at the Emirates Stadium freezing temperatures across the UK tonight ahead of this hugely anticipated second Champions League group stage meeting. Well, it was Arsenal who brought the fire in the reverse fixture with Lyon suffering their heaviest ever European defeat. The Gunners know if they keep their cool and avoid defeat tonight, their place in what will be their 15th quarter final will be confirmed. And so another shake of the hand between Arsenal and Lyon. But Arsenal beware of the wounded animal. Lyon have their sights set on revenge. Add to that a defeat against PSG at the weekend, which saw them relinquish their Division 1 top spot. 
tonight offers a chance to get back on track. So these are the two teams. Arsenal make two changes in defence since their 4-1 victory over Aston Villa at the weekend. So captain Leah Williamson returns to start, as does right-back Laura Wienreuter, which means Raffaele Souza and Noel Moritz drop to the bench. Viviana Miedema has scored four goals in her last four appearances. Kim Little is back among the substitutes for the first time since her knee injury. Lena Hertig is also back. And so it's an all Spanish officiating team tonight. Marta Huerta de Aza is the referee. And the two captains, Leah Williamson and Wendy Reynard, go through their pre match rituals. Well, it's just the one change for uh, Lyon since their defeat to PSG at the weekend. Eugenie Le Sommer to the bench, which means that Perla Moroni comes in at left back. Melvin Mallard leads the line for Lyon. She scored three goals in her last five appearances. So seven of the players who played in that 5-1 defeat to Arsenal start today again. Lyon do welcome back uh, Amal Majri to the squad. She doesn't feature... days so big game coming up Courtney how do you see this one going I think it's in Arsenal's favor it's at home um, and Arsenal know if they avoid defeat that they're, they're going to qualify so it's on Leon to to go at them to to try and and get that opening goal and actually that might work in Arsenal's favor if Leon have to attack go forward and leave gaps for Arsenal well ahead of kickoff the players from both sides take the knee Well, it's Arsenal who get us back underway in this crucial match day five game. Arsenal certainly laid down the marker on match day one. And since then, they've been unbeatable. Avoid defeat tonight and Arsenal are through to their 15th quarter final. Leon, though, will want to prove that October was merely a slip up. Well, both sides, Courtney, will certainly have a point to prove tonight. Yeah, definitely, and I think especially Arsenal playing at the Emirates. You know, aside from that Manchester United defeat, they've really made it a fortress when they've been there, tried to put on a show for, for all the fans that come out. And, you know, Leon are, are one of the, the best teams in the world, so again, to, to beat them again um, with more of a full squad, I think will put out a real marker for what Arsenal are going to do this season. Marno. Ross to Wienreuter. Williamson, who uh, recently returned back from her injury. Raffaelli as well, who actually started as in that centre-back position against Aston Villa over Leah Williamson, who was on the bench. Wienreuter looking to get the early cross in, but it was easily enough handled by Endler. I think it's good to see Hertig back in the squad as well, scored against Zurich back in October. And I, I love the way she plays. She's dynamic, she's athletic going forward and not really got going with her Arsenal career because of injury, but hopefully that can start again soon. Well, there is the Arsenal manager, Jonas Edeval. He uh, was mentioning in his pre-match press conference that it was uh, a beautiful thing to be part of that 5-1 victory over Lyon in the uh, reverse fixture. But uh, he uh, made sure that everybody knew that they do have the utmost respect for the European champions. He knows that this time around might not be quite the same. Yeah, definitely not. And I think, look, you've got to celebrate those victories. But equally, that means nothing you know, tonight it's a completely different game and um, Leon are, are obviously will be out to, to get a bit of revenge. Arsenal already starting to put a bit of pressure on that defensive line for Leon. Here's Marnham. Well, 
Robin Moy. He was looking for that early ball out to Catley. He takes the throw now for Arsenal. Ford, a little bit of a heavy touch, took it away from her, but Catley could come in. Steny has tried to get there too, but... Raynard out to it. This is Williamson. In Reuter. Stopped in the tracks by Moroni. Now Mallard. On the donk. Cascarino. Has some pace, tries to get away from Catley. Cascarino looking for the cross in. Looping over into the hands of Zinsberger. It's the first warning sign really from Leon in these early stages. I know we're only a few minutes in, but Arsenal really have, have dominated most of the play, playing in the Leon half. But you see how dangerous they can be when they get forward quickly. They've got forwards that are dynamic and, and ball carriers like Cascarino, and it's just got to be a, a better ball in. Sonia Bonpastor, who you saw just then on your screens, the Leon manager. Is uh, very happy to have a couple of players back that weren't involved in that reverse fixture against Arsenal back in October. They have had quite a lot of injuries, Leon, to deal with. Big players out, likes of Dubritz, Hegerberg, Cascarino is also out for quite some time. She's now back. Reynard. For that long ball over to Cascarino, too much pace on that though. A couple of times now, Leon have attacked down their right hand side. I don't know whether they're maybe trying to target that side of Arsenal. Catley playing the left full back, so it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Coming in a little bit too heavy onto uh, McCabe. Sinsberger. Now Ruben Moy. Over to Catley. There's uh, freezing cold in London tonight. The Emirates minus one. I don't know if you saw the uh, snowman that was built in the stadium so the snowman is watching on too got an arsenal scarf on i mean they've got to give the <laughs> stewards a bit of fun if they're clearing it all from around the outside they've had a little bit of fun there yeah here's black stenius looking to weave away past wendy renard the leon captain does well to find rin reuter who gets the cross in but it's headed straight out by agarola it's a nice passage of play though from Arsenal, see Black is coming out wide here. It's a fantastic run to try and pull Renard out. She comes back in. It's the overlap, isn't it, from Veen Reuter. Does really well, and it's a decent ball in. Someone's got to be attacking that for me. Well, early signs of danger coming from the home side. Leon have defending to do. The first corner. Will be Frida Marnham with the delivery. Anti willing to take this, but it goes all the way over to that far post. I think it had gone out as she was taking the kick. So a bit of a wasted first corner for Arsenal. Yeah, it was a poor delivery, really. And especially against a team as good as Leon, you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of all your set pieces and, and opportunities. Roller. That's for Mallard. Couldn't place it back to Haran. It was intercepted by Velti. That's what Velti does so well, I think, in that midfield. She just always seems to be right place, right time to be able to intercept balls. And then once she does that, she just plays the simple pass and keeps possession. Wubben Moy. The 
decided to go back to Zinsberger, who's been put under a bit of pressure there by Mallard. Yeah, she, uh, Zinsberger won't be thanking Wuben Moy for that ball back. It, it was quite poor, and then it puts Zinsberger under pressure there and, and give the ball back to Leon. Egarola. Cascarino. Well, good work from Cascarino, but even better defensive work from Catley to make sure she wasn't getting in the box. Yeah, she did so well. I initially thought that Cascarino had, had got the beating of her, but just make sure she drops in a bit to give herself the angle to be able to make the slide tackle. It's a, it's a really good challenge. Our corner taken quickly. Well, perhaps actually slightly too quickly. Referee Marta Huerta de Arza telling Leon to start again. Selma Basha will take. Basha looking for that dangerous cross into the box. Couldn't quite find the Leon players she was looking for. No, and I'm surprised at that though. It was a poor ball in, but when they play it short, there's the two short players with Leon and then the, the one on the edge of the box as well. And it's effectively three against one there. So normally you get the whole player going out for the defending team and the edge player. But 3v1 there, I think Arsenal will have to rethink that going forward. Cascarino again. Tries to get past Catley. Goes back to Haran. Decent delivery, but it was well claimed by Zinsberger first time. Yeah, I think she did really well. She's got Malar and Leah Williamson to contend with there, but really confident, comes out and, and collects well in exactly what you want from your goalkeeper. And Leon currently uh, sit second. The uh, Division 1. They uh, suffered their uh, first defeat. Only at the weekend against PSG. Now Arsenal coming forward. Ford looking for that ball into Blackstenius. To make sure she get there ahead of Gilles. And Gilles had to be very careful as well with that challenge. I thought Blackstenius, when she just got across her, if she clips her there, it's a penalty. But sort of does well to steady herself and, and not dive in. Ford. Nice bit of skill there from Catley to take it away from Mallard. Williamson to Wienreuter. Has a bit of space to run down that right-hand side. And I think McCabe was uh, complaining that she was held back there, wasn't allowed to make that run. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see this back. I do think she was clipped, whether it was an, an intentional and a foul is a different matter, but you see there what I like about Arsenal, playing it forward quickly because PSG get the press wrong. Leah Williamson manages to drop the shoulder and get round it, play the ball forward early, and that's what Arsenal will need to do today to get in the goals. Here's Basha. That's to Cascarino. Cascarino again. Another great block from Catley. I'm really liking this battle. Yeah. I think it, it's one that, you know, throughout the match, it's, it's going to go with ebb and flows. And whenever you think Cascarino is just going to knock it past Catley, she does really well either to, to get the block in or get the slide tackle in. And it definitely evolved through this game. Moroni. Across to Basher again. He'll try and get the better of Wienreuter. Von der Donk. Back to Basher. Starting to get a little bit more comfortable in this game now, Leon. Stolen away by Miedemar. Looking to play that ball forward to Black Stenius, but Wendy Renard had it covered. Yeah, I think Miedemar initially does well but 
Black Stenius, she's so far removed from the, the rest of the Arsenal play, it was always going to be difficult to, to find her in comfortable possession there. Maris Egarola forward to a Dutch international teammate now. Von der Dong, nice ball in to find Mallard. And nothing too testing, though, for Zinsberger. But they are starting to create a couple of chances and starting to look dangerous. Yeah, and they're definitely getting in the final third more freely, looking a lot more dangerous. And say probably the first seven or so, maybe eight, ten minutes, Arsenal were the dominant side. But you can just see now Leon are, are starting to, to get into the flow of the game. Wendy Renard, the all-time Champions League appearance maker, eight-time Champions League winner, hugely experienced player for Lyon. Almost cut short, though, by Blackstenius, picked up here by McKay. Forward it goes to find Miedemar. Forward is an option, but Miedemar decides to go at it alone, but straight into the legs of Gilles. It's a good block, isn't it? And I think the run outside... Probably people are thinking play that ball, but actually it opens up the space for Miedemar. She takes the touch and a uh, player with her quality and the, and the form she's in at the moment, you wouldn't you know, dismiss her for taking that on. And I think it was heading goalbound before the block. Do you sense nerves among either side? No, I think, you know, Leon have got into the game. I don't think it was maybe nerves initially. I think it was the fact that Arsenal are so aggressive um, I think Arsenal are doing well. You've always got to be careful when you know you've not got to lose because you don't want to invite undue pressure. You still you know, need to go forward, need to go for the win. And, you know, they'll be trying to put this pressure on Leon because they know really, Arsenal, that the, the ball's in their court. Leon's are the one that have, have got to come forward, need a, you know, more of a result than Arsenal do. Well, if Arsenal avoid defeat, they will be through to the quarterfinals. A point will be enough. Williamson over to Ford. Miedemark plays it first time to Ford again. Black Stenius wants it ahead of her. Ford with a cross in. McCabe is there. And there is uh, Beth Mead watching on. who uh, unfortunately will be out for quite some time for Arsenal, will be a big miss for them as well. Yeah, I was actually at that game and you could sort of tell even she was the complete opposite side to the press box. But I think you know when a player goes down in that manner, she looked absolutely distraught as well. And you know, thinking about it, she's probably going to be touch and go for the World Cup as well, which is, is devastating for her, especially the form that she was in. And she's such a big player for both England and Arsenal. Well, a reminder you saw there on your screen just moments ago, there's another huge game in the way for Women's Champions League tomorrow night. PSG welcoming Real Madrid. They know a win would guarantee them a place in the quarterfinals. Kickoff for that one is at 9 p.m. CET, which is 8 o'clock UK time. Of course, you can watch every game in the Women's Champions League live on DAZN. And if you can make it out, Wrapped up tightly and warm in a hat. <laughs> I was double scarf. checking. It's, I had to double check myself. That is Serena Weichmann, <laughs> the England manager, watching on. Of course, uh, plenty of her players playing in this game. Really interesting interview as well that that she did um, recently, talking about you know taking on the England job, having to learn about the English culture, and I think it was a, a really interesting listen and, and what she had to go through. But what a job, obviously, she's done with the Lionesses. Stenius. Now well, Viviana Miedemar's back up on her feet, seems to be okay. Renard. Moran finds Egarola. Now Moroni. Moran again.
Does everything hurt that little bit more when yeah. it's freezing cold? Oh, well, you've taken the words out <laughs> of my mouth. That little knee to knee there. If that's in the middle of the summer, they both jump probably straight back up. But yeah, I mean, it's even for England. It's unseasonably cold at the moment. And there's Vic Akers as well. All the, all the legends are out tonight, despite the cold. Is okay, and play can continue. Here's Vin Reuter driving forward now for Arsenal, looking for Black Stenius. Ball wasn't the best though, and just allowed Egarola to get in touch. Such a shame because the run was brilliant she took out so many players with it covered a lot of ground and then when you're just wanting her to be better with the final ball it just let us down Wubin Moy well as it stands Arsenal currently uh, leading the way with the possession side able to break the deadlock yet Moroni Jill it's interesting now that Arsenal have sat into a little bit more of a mid-block initially in, in the game. They were pressing them really high, um, Arsenal, putting Leon under lots of pressure and now drop back into that block. Added away by Williamson. Picked up again by Van der Dong, but Leo Velti was there just to tidy things up at the back for Arsenal and gets the free kick too. <laughs> They'll know all about Van der Donk and those little uh, clips on the back here. I've had the, the pleasure of, of some of those. I must admit she's one of those players to play against that's so frustrating. She just... And makes those little fouls, calms the game down for Leon. But also, she's got the quality to add on to that. She's one of, one of those players that's really frustrating to play against. Yeah, Van der Donk's made more than uh, 100 appearances for Arsenal between 2015 and 2021. So back up against her former club today. Roney, not the best ball from her to try and find Basha, but she came out to help. And now Basha can go forward. Mallard will turn to find Cascarino. Tries to pick out Mallard again, but Wubben Moy stood in the way. And then uh, Mallard was holding on to Wubben Moy, well spotted by the referee. It does make me laugh when players do that, and I do the same thing. You put your hands up as if to say it's not a foul, and you know full well it is. You see here, Wuba Moy does so well, and then she's just pulling her back, but tries to plead her innocence. Marnham forward. This is Blackstenius. McKay. Interesting as well to see Selma Basha in that more advanced role. We usually see her as a left back, Moroni currently in that left-back position for Leon. The ball over to find Ford. Black Stenius and McCabe making their way inside the penalty area. Ford is there, looks to cut it back. Agarola with not the best clearance really for Leon. Gets uh, a corner as well. Yeah, just, just about goes out, didn't it? The, the clearance leaving a little bit to be desired, but Ford, I think, does ever so well. She's looking for the pullback. You've got the two at Arsenal players there front and back post I just think there needs to be someone on a different line just to be coming onto that ball because I think the pullback is the right idea the second corner of this first half for Arsenal Catley this time to take it Catley with the delivery looking for Wubben Moy wasn't a bad effort either inches away no, I think Ruben Moy does really well. And as I said earlier, the, the initial corner from Marnham was poor, but this is a, it's a good delivery. It's slightly behind Ruben Moy, so you see she has to, to readjust and 
nearly does ever so well to try and find the target, but it's a, a much better ball um, in from the corner. And a foul from Vin Reuter onto Salma Basha. I've liked seeing Basha in a, in a more advanced position as well. We used to see in a obviously getting forward from that full-back position anyway, the way that Leon played, but to see her even further forward, she's done well so far. Reynard. Lindsay Horan. US international. Maroney. trying to play it forward to Moroni, he's making that overlapping run, didn't quite work out. Arsenal just look so cool and calm, don't they, at the back? Yeah, they're always so composed on the ball and it doesn't matter where they are on the pitch. Every single player from defender to forward is, is exquisite on the ball and, and that's why they, they can play the type of football that they do playing out from the back. But what I think Jonas Vidal has, has added to this team is aggression um, off the ball. And, you know, we've, we've seen it both in the in the Champions League and the WSL. They're more aggressive out of possession. Gilles. To Endler. Renard, who has uh, played all of their Champions League games so far this season. In fact, she's played every single minute. Woman Moy. Mr. Williamson. I feel like what Arsenal are doing here is trying to to coax Leon into coming into him here. Like you see that, then they can miss the press out if, if it's not right which on a couple of occasions for Leon it hasn't been they've pressed in ones and twos rather than the units and, and once they do that Arsenal will look to try and exploit that and pass the press Marner looking for uh, Catley this is Ford nicked away though by Cascarino who can try and dance away through this Arsenal defence Well, referee, let's play go on. Didn't see anything wrong there. Egarola. And Kelly's still down, but Leon carry on going, and the shot comes in, looking to get her hand right on the end of it. Well, Arsenal aren't happy that the referee didn't stop play. No, and. I know that Leon wanted the foul as well. The referee won't stop it. If she doesn't think it's a, a foul, it, it doesn't look like a head injury. So it'd be interesting to see whether it's maybe just the way that, that both the players there have come together. Well, it looks like it might be something. Yeah, it might be the way that she's with, just sort of yeah. knocked her head then and a couple of blinks as, it, as if to say, you know, when, when you take that knock to the head, it almost disorientates you a little bit. So understanding in that sense why Arsenal would be angry. Well, then the other... Group C fixture, Juventus beat Zurich 5-0. Zurich also had a player sent off too. So, as it stands, Juventus second. As we know, though, it will all be going down to that game next week. Juventus against Lyon. A crucial, crucial game to see which one will be going through to the quarterfinals. Seems to be doing okay. 
Steph Catley. And she's OK to continue. Kay wants to get on with it quickly. I love watching Katie McCabe. She's so aggressive. She's so strong there and <laughs> just gets her body in the way. And she's she's not the biggest. She's quite slight. But the way that she uses her body is, is unbelievable for her size. Marna. Here's Williamson. Almost half an hour played, and neither side have really been able to test the goalkeepers. Arsenal, perhaps with a couple of opportunities, but nothing too testing. Yeah, I mean, the, you'd probably say the Wuben Moy chance was was the best chance, and you know, that didn't even force a save from Mendler. It was off target, but I think Arsenal will be slightly the happier. I think they look more composed in possession and. As I say, they, they know that they don't have to play with the, the urgency that Leon do, and they're quite happy to keep possession round at the back and pick their moments to, to try and play for when they think they can catch Leon out. Renard. Well, she's not had much joy so far, Melvin Mallard. Miedema, forward to four. Catley is there to support. Catley looking for the cross in. Away again by Egarola, and this time, Gilles. Just feel that Arsenal have got to get a good quality ball in the box because you know, when it's sort of 50-50 like they've been doing, Leon looked less than convincing. So you think if you can get a better ball in, you know, they'll, they'll probably score from it or at least get something on target. Cascarino, back to Von der Donk. Asumbat. McKay. I think what you will say about Arsenal, you know, on the transitions and winning the first and second balls, they've definitely look more alive to it uh, compared to Leon and that looked like a foul to me but referee seems to say not well play goes on and Mallard walks away into Wibben Moy Mallard stayed down Haran wants to get on with things and she's down now too and two players down for Leon and Cascarino spotted it and will uh, stop play Horan's not happy, is she? But I think it's it's consistency, I suppose, from the ref in terms of I thought it was a foul on the Arsenal player. She plays on, and if you don't give that one, I think it was very similar with Horan. So, no, at least the referee's being consistent. goal difference will be a big talking point in the uh, Group C because Juventus of course beating uh, Zurich 5-0 in fact Cristiano Girelli scored four of those five goals uh, in that game this evening but it does mean though that Juventus have got three goals difference over Lyon such a competitive group isn't it and that's what we want to see it you know it, it really going down to the wire for these teams
Here's Wubba Moy. Well, that's an earlier kickoff for Arsenal in their uh, final fixture before Christmas. Zurich, who are already out, can't qualify to the next round. And it would be very, very unlikely for Arsenal to not go through to the quarterfinals. No, you would imagine not. And I think, you know, they've fully deserved it in their campaign so far in the, the Champions League. And I think, you know, it really started off with a bang, didn't it, with that Leon win. And, and from there, they've really tried to go from strength to strength. Well, they were knocked out in the quarterfinals last season uh, by Wolfsburg. So they'll be hoping to go that one step further like Stenius good ball looking for Miedemar tries to take it first time and McCabe did her best to try and keep that in play but it had gone out yeah the thumbs up there from Miedemar and I think she knows though she's made a bit of a, a wrong decision you expect her there the the form she's in the goal scorer she is to maybe cut in on her own and take that she's trying to be unselfish you see what she's trying to do with the outside of the foot and and bring it round to katie mckay but just doesn't quite get the execution right moroni mallard all stolen away by Leah Volti. Frustrated, isn't she? Malar so far, she's hardly had anything to feed off. And any time the ball does go into her, she's got two or three Arsenal players around her ag aggressively trying to win the ball back. Turn, trying to get away from Wien Reuter, but defending from McCabe. Von the Donk comes in and gets it back. So Arsenal every time seem to be coming out the better of these sort of 1v1 and 50-50 and battles one way or another. They just seem to, to be coming out the winners. Moy. Ford. Interesting. <laughs> I think her on now, I'm sure she comes through the, the back of Black Stenius. I think she gets the ball at some point, but I think it's after she swiped Black Stenius's legs out. She's let quite a lot go, this referee, hasn't she, tonight? And like I say, you know, again, I, I thought that was a foul, but equally, you know, she's being consistent. She's sort of not blowing for anything. So, you know, in one way, sometimes that's all you ask from a referee to, to be consistent. Well, you can see from the graphic there that uh, Juventus currently in that second placed spot. That is on goal difference after they uh, scored five past Zurich in the earlier fixture this evening. So it will be all to play for next week when Leon and Juventus face off against each other, of course, that game on the zone. Wubba Moy. Miedemar. Here's Blackstenius. Green Reuter collects. Now McCabe. Looking for the ball in. Ford's there. It's close. Very close. It's a fantastic ball. And 
that's what you get when you play your, your wingers inverted, the fact that they can cut in and deliver balls like that, and that's inches away, but good play from Blackstenius there. I think she gets fouled, but Arsenal play on. The little touch inside there, wonderful ball. It's so inviting, and as I say, an inch less on that, and it's probably in the back of the net. Well, it was a delightful ball over from Katie McCabe. Is that what you wanted to see more of? Just those inviting crosses, just to get someone on the end of it? Because there hasn't been too much testing on either end. No, definitely not. And, you know, the couple of times that Arsenal you know, have got in the, the wide areas to deliver, I don't think the balls have been good enough, but that is, that is an, an absolutely phenomenal ball. And as I say, I don't think Leon looked overly convincing. And, and you saw it then when a good go, ball sorry, go, goes in the box. Uh, they, they don't look... They're, they're in place to defend it. to Moroni that's away from Marnham Moroni keeps going there's a cut in but it wasn't the, the ball that Lindsay Horan wanted Marnham had it covered Wubba Moy forward to Ford Mallard got a little touch to it to get it away from uh, Wubba Moy that's a, a frustrated smile. She's hardly been in the game, and especially with this Leon team, that's not what they used to. They're used to dominating games and the possession, and you know, for most of this game, they've, they've been in a low block. Well, uh, Perla Moroni is down for Leon. Like is a problem with her left leg. They are putting the magic spray we'll get on. Get the magic spray yeah. out. <laughs> well, she won't want any more injuries added to the already very long list of players that are missing for Leon. have really struggled quite badly this season with injuries. The Brits, Marajan, Bok, Macario, Carpenter, all players who were injured for Lyon. Well, still without the services of their star player, Ada Hagerberg. Nice ball over, though, to find Ford. Trying to weave away inside, was looking at McCabe, he was just getting in on the edge of that penalty area. Yeah, you could see what she was trying to do. And how many times have we seen McCabe arrive on the edge of the box and hit one top corner from there? Catley. And for the cross again, McCabe was there, but out it goes to Reuter. For the cross again, and headed out by Egarola. I think that's actually a good ball from Veen Reuter. And she's got to be asking questions of a forward there as to why nobody is attacking that ball. There's four Leon defenders around that take your pick which one wants to defend it and no Arsenal player really trying to get in front of the defenders and the third corner in this first half then for Arsenal Catley will take they'll be hoping they can try and break the deadlock before half time make things a little bit more comfortable in this game Catley, straight out by Renard. Here's Valti. Stenius tried to leap over but couldn't get there. Picked up again by McCabe. Oh, she's gone back on that earlier challenge. The referee tried to let play go on. Yeah, she's tried to play the advantage, but saw it right to pull it back. But again, I think Arsenal have done really well in that spell of possession, keeping the pressure on. And you know, a few minutes now till half time, and they'll definitely be the, the happier of the two sides going in if it stays like this. Oh, 
Agarola looked like she was the uh, player that came worse off after that challenge between her and McCabe. I think it's how McCabe landed on her. Sort of, I don't know whether it's the neck or the collarbone, but she that's where she seems to be holding. Shrug of the shoulders from Katie McCabe, she's not bothered. <laughs> Marnham. Here's Haran. Moroni. Just missed and Cascarino. Great block. Back out to Cascarino again. And it finds to the Donk. And Marnham was there to block it away. A huge block from Steph Catley to deny Leon an opener. That's unbelievable. We're speaking about this battle between Catley and Cascarino, and, and Catley's definitely tipping the balance at the moment. It's good play, though. Leon's best play of this first half by far. Arsenal poor at the defending, misses three defenders there, and Cascarino, she's probably thought she scored there. She's waiting to wheel off and celebrate. Alvin Reuter wasn't letting them through again, and now she's been allowed some space to chase out. Alvin Reuter. Cascarino coming all the way back to save it for Leon. And Katie McCabe, she's asking, what about that one? She thinks there's already a foul in there. The former teammates are, are going at it as well. And this is the problem when referees let games go. And yes, there's, there can be the consistency. But then when it starts to, to get a bit spicy like this, I think referees create a rod for their own back. Well, we're into three minutes added on in this first half. And it is starting to get a little bit spicy now. Leon with a fabulous opportunity denied by the block of Steph Catley, who you have to say has had an outstanding first half. She's been phenomenal. I think Cascarino has been Leon's best player, but Catley has been better than Cascarino. It's been a wonderful battle to watch, but that's just a warning sign from Leon. And you know, when they turn it on, they've got so much quality. Well, they go again. Haran was almost there. Headed forward as well. Mallard tries to get there. And it's trickled into the back of the net. And Leon do have an opening right before half time. Well, Arsenal couldn't. Stop that from finding the back of the net. But Leon will take it and they have the breakthrough. Yeah, they do. And for me, it's poor from Arsenal. You see now the players are looking at each other. There's a, a bit of an inquest. And you know, we said only, what, 30 seconds ago? It was a warning sign from Leon. It was defended poorly at the back post. And again, this is just, it's route one. To, to be frank, they don't defend it well. The first phase isn't defended well. The second phase certainly isn't defended well. You can argue that's offside, but does she touch the ball? Is she interfering with play? That's another question for another day. We don't have the pleasure of VAR. I do think Mallard there is offside and she does, you know, impede Zinsberger. So, you know, it probably is offside, but you've got to look at the defending first from Arsenal, which was really poor. Well, it's gone down as an own goal from Frida Marnham. Arsenal couldn't clear it away. And Leon have the lead in what is a crucial game for both Arsenal and Leon. And Leon have the advantage. McCabe. Arsenal looking to respond. Marna. Meet him up. Is down. Don't like the look of this. All the players look really concerned, and you know Van der Donk's gone over as well, and you sort of know with, with the reaction from players. 
It looks quite serious. Well, uh, that will be worrying signs because Viviana Miedema has been in absolutely outstanding form since she returned four goals in the last four appearances. Well, this is how it happened. I mean, the goal, you're looking at that. There's no doubt in that Malar is offside. You know, the question is, she doesn't touch it, I don't think, and goes down as an own goal. But surely you've got to say that she is interfering there with Zinsberger, and, and that makes Zinsberger comfortable. Yes, she misses it, but you know, that interference is enough for me. But you know, this is not great to see, is it? The stretcher coming on. Miedemar, she's not moved, and I always think that's quite telling. When a player goes down and, and doesn't move as to you know how serious the the injury is well the stretch is coming on well she looks visibly very upset Miedemar and of course not nice thing to see We do hope she's okay and wish her a speedy recovery. I mean, you can tell how painful this is for her. Yeah. You're just... It's off the ball. And again, always worrying. She's going down. Clutching her knee, I think, and don't want to tempt fate. But in terms of that with... You know, you're sitting there thinking that's probably ACL. Um, hopefully it's not, and you know we hope for the best. And you know, Arsenal have got a great medical team; she'll she'll have the scans and they'll do everything they can. But that really isn't a scene that you you like to see. Well, they are being very very careful, aren't they, with that left leg of Viviana Miedema, who is being heavily strapped now before she gets taken off in the stretcher. And that is really upsetting to see for Miedemar and for Arsenal. Another big key player out injured. Well, of course, plenty of concerned fans inside the stadium as well for Viviana Miedemar. There's uh, Beth Mead as well looking on, who, of course, is out with an ACL injury. And hopefully it's not as bad as, as we all fear, but you know, it, it doesn't look good, and especially when a player goes down off the ball like that, you, you always fear for the worst, but... We obviously wish her the best. A really sad scenes to see Viviana Miedemar being stretched off for Arsenal. Beth Mead watches on, and really upsetting, of course, for Miedemar herself as well, who has been in superb form for her side and we do wish her well and a speedy recovery is williamson Win Reuter. Well, from what I can tell, Arsenal haven't made a change. Oh, 
With that goes the half-time whistle. Well, right at the end, Leon were able to take advantage from a Frieda Marnham own goal. Arsenal weren't able to clear it away. But that first half now clouded by that very fortunate injury to Viviana Miedema, who's had to be stretched off right at the end of that first half. We, of course, wish her well. The half-time score, Arsenal nil, Leon one. So, advantageous position for Leon, Courtney, going into the second half. How do you see both teams coming forward? Well, I think for Arsenal, they'll be disappointed in the fact that I think for you know, 45 minutes of, of that half, they were by far the better team. They had the better chances. And they had that warning sign from Leon just before the goal. And, you know, just two occasions where they defended so poorly. Uh, one's ended in a goal, so they'll be so disappointed. And then to to lose Miedema, um in that fashion, they'll be really disappointed. I think as a player as well, when, you know, uh, one of your teammates goes off in distress like that, it, it's difficult to deal with. But in this second half, they've got to as much as they can be professional try and put that to the side and um, you know and try and get themselves back in that game but Leon I think are, are very fortunate to be ahead but we know you know they used to win in their serial winner so once they get their themselves ahead that it's you know they, they become front runners in the game so they'll make it very difficult for Arsenal in the second half well, these are the match stats. It certainly started to even out a little bit more, but Arsenal with the uh, better of the possession, just the one attempt on target from Leon. Arsenal weren't able to get any attempts on target, just the one attempt in total. Does that surprise you? Yeah, it does, because it'll, it'll be the, the, the Wuber Moore chance from that corner. But this is where you've got to you know, argue that Arsenal have to do it a bit better in, with the possession that they've had, because for me, they totally dominated uh, but they just didn't carve out anything clear cut and got undone really by uh, that that one attempt on target and it was just a, a route one long ball that they didn't deal with well defensively Arsenal well the half-time score Arsenal nil Leon one okay well Danielle a, a dramatic end to the half there what are your thoughts yeah uh, I feel very sad for her because yeah, you don't wish that on anyone and it doesn't look good. So, yeah, I'm, uh, my thoughts are with her. And of course, before that, you obviously you got the goal and it was, a, it was a tough half. It seemed to come almost out of nothing. How would you sum it up? Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of yeah, kind of what I felt like. Uh, um, the game was going both ways, uh, both a lot of the ball, uh, not many great chances. But, uh, yeah, happily we scored one goal. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. The thoughts there of Leon's Daniela von der Donk at half time. Hey kids, want to go out? Yeah. Director. What's today's forecast? The weather today is perfect for... Football! Director, we didn't ask... Football! Direct... Football! Give me football! So... Football? Declan? No. This is my family. Every World Cup, we all get together. Mate, let's go. Vamos! Karim eats goals for breakfast. Leo, he's one of a kind. With Sunny, everything's brown. Nobody's faster than Hakeem. Serge's style is unbeatable. You can't forget about your boy Storms. When football is everything, impossible is nothing. We got a telex that there is a positive doping control. And it concerns player number 10. La creencia esta que dio positivo por cocaína es errada. Que alguien lo, lo pergeñó no me cabe la menor duda. Ahora, ¿quiénes fueron? Créeme que me cortaron las piernas. Peggy 8.
opportunity and it's Miedemar. Cross came in and what a finish that was from Viviana Miedemar. It's three and three for her. And an outstanding finish to put the home side in the lead. But well, what a sublime finish that was for Miedemar. voice you can hear is the voice of Gerard Pressure, the Saint main coach as he's watching Fouke come forward and Fouke score magnificently into the bottom corner. Paris Saint-Germain have their fourth and Yama Fouke has her first of the night and her first Champions League goal, the teenager. Lovely ball inside, and the top corner is found in lightfully. What a gorgeous goal! Ramona Backman at her very best, and Paris Saint Germain have three just inside the hour mark here. Could be another opportunity. Oh, it is goal number four. Just to seal it before full time. And it's Cascarino with a shot square on the jury goal. Saw the goalkeeper off a line. Oh, it's a brilliant goal. Roma are back in it and in spectacular fashion. Saw the opportunity so early there, the Brazilian international. Maybe a little complacent there, Will Spurk. But she had that glance up and saw that the goalkeeper was off her line. Spied the opportunity and then took it emphatically. This is brilliant from Andressa Alves. Made that look much easier than it actually was. Some Christmas traditions we can't live without. And then there are new ones like... Football. Wow. So this festive season... Give me football. Pass the salt, please. Oh, Jesus has put it on a plate for her. This is my family. Every World Cup, we all get together. Mate, let's go. Vamos. Karim eats goals for breakfast. Leo, he's one of a kind. With Sunny, everything's brown. Nobody's faster than Hakeem. Serge's style is unbeatable. You can't forget about your West Storms. When football is everything, impossible is nothing. Fight fans, welcome to the The Zone Boxing Show. Bringing you all the exclusive news, interviews, and outspoken views from the world of boxing. I'm back in beast mode. The fight starts now! Catch the latest boxing news every single weekday. I'm gonna be honest, man. That kid's pissing me off. This is what boxing's all about. From the best fighters to the biggest promoters. Give me some fucking props. The boxing world is going to be buzzing. No one takes you closer to the fight game than the The Zone Boxing Show. Peggy, 18.
Welcome back, almost ready to get underway in the second half. And Rafael Isauza is the player who is warming up, who will be uh, replacing Viviana Miedemar. So quite a defensive change there, Courtney. Were you expecting them to put a defender on? No, I wasn't. Especially because obviously they're down in the game. They could, could do with getting a goal. They've got sort of Hertig on the bench that they could move things around here with Bucci like to play in that number 10 role we've been told that you know Kim Little she's on the bench but not actually fit to play we've also got Jordan Nobbs on there as well so the fact that they've brought a defender on maybe they might push Leah Williamson into sort of a defensive midfield and, and push someone else up but yeah it, it surprised me that she's a player that's come on well she's been going through her uh, warm-up quite intensely during that half-time break the uh, Brazilian defender. Getting a handshake from a manager, Jonas Irival. There is work to do for Arsenal, who currently trail by a goal to nil to the reigning European champions, Lyon, who uh, took advantage, thanks to an own goal from Frieda Marnham, right on the stroke of half-time, that half clouded though by the uh, sad injury to Viviana Miedemar who was stretched off and we of course wish her well and Leon looking to make a change themselves as well Amandine Henri is ready to come on to the start of this second half so there is the change Viviana Miedemar for Rafael Isauza And Amandine Omri, who uh, recently returned from injury, will be re replacing the uh, former Arsenal player, Daniela von der Donk. So the players out and ready to get back underway in this match day five women's champions league group c match arsenal know if they avoid defeat they're through to the quarterfinals so they'll be looking for a response in this second half after leon took the lead right on the stroke of half time looks like it's marnham up with black stenius so far I think Kate, they've pulled McCabe in potentially as well. And yeah, it looks like Leah Williamson is, is playing now in the defensive midfield. So shuffled it about ever so slightly. Well, uh, Leon have stopped their opponents from scoring in the first half in four of their five games in the Champions League this season, so they've done it the most out of anyone. They were able to keep Arsenal relatively at bay. They had just the one attempt as they come forward again. And Haran trying to weave away inside the penalty area, but away by Wien Reuter, straight to the feet of Wendy Reynard. I think that's the thing with Leon, isn't it, as well, when they... They're good defensively and they get themselves in front. It's very difficult to then claw that deficit back. They're like a freight train at that point. They just seem to, to gather momentum and, and be able to, to win games from those positions. Well, as it stands now, Arsenal and Leon join on 10 points in uh, Group C. Arsenal, though, do have two goals better than Leon. So still plenty to look forward to in this Group C clash. There's not over yet. Ford. Raffaele. To uh, Wubben Moy. Oh, the basher was trying to put the pressure on. getting in there just in time psychologically for Arsenal will what had happened 
at the end of that first half have any impact on how they play now in the second half? Yeah, I think it will. You've, you know, the best teams can sort of block that out mentally and, you know, Arsenal are well up there, so they will try to do that. But, you know, there's two sides to it. There's the fact that they've seen their, their teammate in a, in a lot of pain and I think that's, that's always difficult when, you know, your teammates, you spend most of your life with them. You spend more time with your teammates than your family. So, you know, that, that will be difficult for them to see and process. Um, and also the fact that they've dominated the first half of that long, they'll be so disappointed that they've been undone by a long ball and, and poor defending. So, yeah, it's going to be difficult for Arsenal. But, you know, to be beat the best teams and, and to be the best teams, you've got to psychologically be, be so strong. And that's what they've got to do in this moment. Here's Williamson. Trying to play it forward. Blackstenius can hold on to it. McCabe is there. Ford is getting in too. McCabe with the chance head in hands and she knows because it was tame in the end she's either got to get that onto a left foot and take a real good strike with the ball that we know she's got or you know try and find a teammate in the middle but made the wrong decision there going for goal on a, on a weaker foot Williamson here's Ford to Williamson, tried to get it forward to Marnham. Very powerful hit, really. I like watching Liam Williamson and a bit further forward in defensive midfield. Obviously, she's a fantastic centre-back, but I just think she can influence the game a little bit more from that midfield position. Can get herself forward more, but that's really poor from Leon there. Well, you could tell from the reaction. And Vanessa Gilles, as soon as that happened, giving away a uh, throw in to Arsenal. Can't leave, guess the ball taken off her by Cascarino. Arsenal have started this first, sorry, second half very aggressively, really well. You can obviously see that you know, the team have, have had a bit of a talk into at half time. They've you know, changed it around in terms of the the personnel and positioning, and they've looked positive. But you know they've got to get that goal. Well, stopped there by Vinroy, who does really well to try and get away from Moroni. The option is Marnham. McCabe, back to Marnham. Like Stenius. Raffaele. Not the best ball from Valti because Cascarino right onto it. I think initially in that first phase as well, Kate McCabe, she shaped up on her left and Looked like she was going to swing a ball inside, much like the, the opportunity in the first half, which was a great chance. But I think at times Arsenal just tried to be too precise. And, you know, when it works, it looks wonderful. But sometimes I think they turn down good opportunities to make a great opportunity that then doesn't come. It's Cascarino again, tries to wriggle her way through three of those Arsenal shirts, able to find Henri. Now Cascarino again. Good stop, though, by Catley. Again, Catley equal to it, Cascarino. And her have, have had this battle now for 50 minutes, and you know, it's been fantastic to watch. But for me, Catley's just about on top, despite being on the losing team at the moment. Hello from Mallard inside the area. Early across wasn't the most convincing. In our forward. 
What was missing from the Arsenal performance in the first half? I think it's that just clinical nature, that composure in the final third. I think you know, going up into the final third, they play it well around the defence um, and play it into midfield really well, but just need that extra bit of quality that they've not quite found yet. Here's Blackstenius. Now to keep on going through, Blackstenius tries to get a shot away. Now Ford. Picked up by Henri. Alti tries her best to get it back, so does Catley. Again, just, just trying to be too precise, and I think that's the other thing that they were missing in the first half. You, you saw Leon in terms of, you know, it's just a long ball forward and then get bodies round the ball, try and create a bit of chaos, and they get a goal from it, where I think at times Arsenal try to score the perfect goal. Forward to Mallard. Picked up here by Basher and seen away by Vin Reuter. Really good defending. Sombat. Here's Marnham. Driving at this Leon defence, good ball in to find Ford. Ford gets it across, but couldn't find the Arsenal shirts who are waiting to get it. It's the wrong ball again. In work it so well, Marnham does brilliantly well. The ball, the weight on it is absolutely exquisite. Blackstenius just wants that ball rolled in front of her so she can tap it in, and it's the wrong decision to pull it back. Well, Melvin Mallard hadn't had much luck really in this game. Wasn't featured very much. And she has been replaced by Eugenie Le Sommer. Although you could say played her part in that opening goal for Lyon, despite it being down as an own goal for Frida Marnham. Question marks about whether or not she was offside. Yeah, there was, but equally, you know, she's got herself in a, a good position. And sometimes you say, you know, with the headers especially, even if you can't win the ball, compete, make sure you jump for it um, and, you know, and cause an issue. And for there, she did for Zinsberger. Ford. Axtenius. Got away by Agarola. Cascarino. Le Sommer. Good play this from Leon. Cascarino looking to play it across. Le Sommer is there. Big hit from her. Punched away by Zinsberger. Armory gets it back in. I'll tell you what, looking at that foul. I think, could be wrong, could easily be a red. I think she leads with her elbow, but coming back to this wonderful play by Leon. Cascarino finally gets the better of Catley. It's a good ball in, defended well, and Le Sommer's following it up, strikes it really well, but you're expecting Zinsberger to save that. Yes, it struck well, but it's straight at the goalkeeper. Williamson. Good pressure by Leon. William trying to receive Williamson, sorry, receives that back to play. It's always going to be difficult to try and wriggle out of trouble there. Now 
Whistle there. Couldn't hold on to it. This is Valti. Is there a sense now for Arsenal that they just have to keep the scoreline down? Because they know that they're going through as long as they avoid a four-goal defeat because of obviously beating Lyon in the reverse fixture 5-1. But yeah, I think, look, they've got to keep themselves in, in the game. They've got to keep themselves into contention because especially against Lyon, it's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about four, but if you go two down, it quickly goes to three and four. Wien Reuter across. McCabe. Back to Williamson, plays it in, Marnham's there. Couldn't direct her header on target. Good opportunity for Arsenal, but what I like about this, it's the early ball in the box. They're not trying to be too precise with it. It's decent build-up play, playing off one and two touches, and then Williamson, it's a good delivery in the box. And, you know, Marnham, with the quality that she has, she's, you know, you're expecting her to, to do better there and at least hit the target. But, yeah, I think Arsenal... As I say, they've got to go forward, keep themselves in contention, still be balanced at the back because, you know, it's quite easy against Leon to, to go 2-0 down, to go 3, to go 4, because once they get momentum and ahead of Steam Leon, they're very hard to stop. Still Arsenal who are holding the better of the possession, but it's Leon who lead. Across to Sombat. Picked up here by Cascarino. She had to weave her way through, but Raffaele stood in her way. Cascarino again. On the turn, looking to play the ball into Le Sommer. Stopped by Williamson. Leon are looking so much better in moments. Le Sommer there disappointed it's not a corner and looked so to me yeah looked to me as well but yeah this is a lovely little triangle the the give and go outside of the foot it's a wonderful run and then looks like it comes off Leah Williamson she's walking back to get in position to defend the corner I think yeah. she surprises anyone else that it wasn't the corner Well, there is more UEFA Women's Champions League tomorrow night, including uh, last year against Chelsea. We've also got Roma's clash against St. Poulton too. All the matches on the zone. This is four. Trying to weave away in, but some back with the uh, ball away. Shame there, I think her first touch let her down. If she can get her first touch in front of her and then try and play the ball in behind for Black Stenius, it would have been a great opportunity. Basher. Not too much on that. Lusa Mare was arriving. You see what she's trying to do, just cut in on that left foot and deliver the ball for a teammate, but just overhits it. forward left by McKay for Vinroy to try and chase down but Moroni got there first Blackstenius you see Arsenal now they're starting to be a bit more direct instead of playing out from the back it's the, the long ball from the back and actually they're getting a little bit of joy from it Fairly. Catley to Ford, try to be clever. Oh, 
Horan. It's the turn and get away from Williamson. Raffaelli coming in in the end. I just think Leon are picking their moments a, a lot better now going forward. Arsenal are obviously playing with more urgency and they're piling more players forward, but Leon are, are so much more composed than they were in the first half and able to exploit the spaces that the Arsenal players are leaving behind. Renard. This by Vinroy de la Somer will collect. Basher on that left side, stopped by Valti. There is a sense, really, isn't there, that this game just needs a moment of magic. Yeah, it doesn't. Unfortunately, normally for Arsenal, you're looking for Miedemar to provide that moment. But you now in these big moments where you need a player to, to step up and take the game by the scruff of the neck, someone you know, for Arsenal has, has got to come and do that. And I think, for me, Ford's got in some great positions, but a final ball has, has been sadly lacking. And you just think if she can find a, a big moment to to play the ball into to Black Stenius or, or maybe even herself. She could get Arsenal straight back in this game because Ford's movement has been excellent today. It's just the, the technicality on the ball. Henri forward. Okay, coming in on the back of Horan there. Yeah, it looked a, a definite foul. She's run away. I think she's potentially got away with that, a yellow card, but got to be skating on thin ice at the moment, McCabe. She's made a few fouls now. Basher with the delivery for this free kick. Headed on by uh, Henri. with the ball away. Henri is wearing all of the thermals. <laughs> I mean, it is a it is a cold night, so we'll <laughs> give her the benefit of the doubt. Some bad. Some bad with the cross. Led away by Vinreuter, picked up by Basher. Basha will try again, and that's smacked right into Wienreuter. Yeah, she's took one for the team there. That will have definitely taken the wind out of her. It's one of those ones that takes your breath away and worsened on a cold night when you're breathing cold air into your lungs as well. Well, he's got some thinking to do. The Arsenal manager, Jonas Edeval. 
he's very calm and composed when you do speak to him so I'm sure he'll still be feeling very calm knowing that his uh, Arsenal side are on their way through to the quarterfinals yeah I think he's always very pragmatic isn't he and very much believed in his process and, and what he's building with this Arsenal side you know, so we'll take the positives out of it so far which there you know there have been some um, but he'll definitely be disappointed by the way that you know, they defended that goal that Arsenal could potentially miss out on is that top spot. How important is it to try and qualify in that number one's position? Yeah, I think for one, just for, for your confidence to know that you finish top of the pile is, is one thing. Um, obviously, it, it counts in terms of then your, um, you know, your game for going forward. But then, it, you know, it's, it's, we've seen it can be so unpredictable anyway. As Vin Reuter tries to get the shot away, but she was being closed down well by Leon Amaroni. He tracked her run well. Yeah, defended that really well. And I think Vin Reuter's done well tonight going forward. She's been great defensive duties and she's, she's added to that attack, but they just managed to, to get the block in there. Here's Marnham. Oh, the touch took it away from it. Omri, who was the uh, hero really in the Champions League final in Turin in the summer when she scored that outstanding goal, helping Leon on their way to their eighth Champions League title. All well given away, and Arsenal back in possession. See now Leon are making it so difficult for Arsenal in their defensive shape. They're in the, the low block and Arsenal need to, to move the ball quicker in possession to be able to, to get more quality in the final third. I think a little bit of uh, miscommunication may be there between Wendy Renard and Moroni, but they were able to keep it in play. Le Sommer finds Basher looking for the cross, and Cascarino was just behind it. I think there was just a little push in the back there that the the referee saw but again it's scary how quickly Leon can sort of turn it on and add quality they'll sit in the low block then when they win the ball back to say in this second half they've been so much more composed and next thing you know they knit a few passes together in there in the Arsenal box Basha Sombad forward to Cascarino. Now Omri finding Haran. Sombad. Now Cascarino. Now Basha tried her best to try and win that ball back, but the foul on to Caitlin Ford. Yeah, and Leon. They're just probably happy almost to, to take that foul on the edge of the Arsenal box. And it's really the time now that Arsenal need to decide what they want to do with only 18 minutes left in this game. They've got to decide, are they happy to settle for the 1-0, for the knowing that they'll go through at that stage, or do they really want to push on and try and get the equaliser? Well, frustration for Williamson, who was stopped in the tracks, and now an opportunity again for Leon to try and come forward. I mean, you can't say the referee's not 
try to let this game flow, whether <laughs> yeah. we agree or not in terms of the foul. She's tried to let as much go as possible. She has. Raffaelli. Valti. A bit nervy there from Zinsberger. Well, Arsenal currently second in the uh, Women's Super League table, three points behind the leaders for Chelsea. Still got that game in hand over them, though. Yeah, and I think the WSL race is setting up to be tight this year, isn't it? Manchester derby, the 1-1 the there. So Manchester United have sort of fallen behind a little bit, but you know, still really in it. And they'll want that third champion, uh, Champions League spot and then... Arsenal and Chelsea as we used to fighting it out for that top spot, but I think there'll be a lot of, of changes throughout the season and might see a new WSL winner crowned. There's Marnham. Catley. Williamson. Finn Reuter. to Marnham, but she uh, stopped her run. She knew the flag was going to be up against her. Yeah, it's a shame because found herself in a good position there and Arsenal playing the ball in a, a good area, but it's close. I think she's on. That is close. I think it's the left back that's playing her on who's, who's got a hand up in the air. Le Sommet. Cascarino. And for that deep cross to try and find Basher. Moroni. Basher. Chasing it down. Picked up by Cascarino. Cascarino looking for Le Sommet. Spilled by Zinsberger, but there was nowhere there to tap it in. And Zinsberger takes hold. It's an inviting ball, that. That's the ball as a forward that you want that curls behind the defensive line. And even if, you know, you as a forward don't get anything on it, you're hoping it comes off a defender. What a ball that is, by the way, by the outside of the foot. And then, yeah, it's a great ball by Cascarino. Leon looking to double their lead. to Blackstenius away by Gilles it's a shame she couldn't get hold of it there she had Ford in a good supporting position if she could have took that down on the chest and, and played it back to Ford they could have mounted an attack but I just think that probably sums Arsenal up in a nutshell tonight just when it goes into that final third just for, for one reason or another lacking a little bit of quality there's Wien Reuter And down to Valti. Tries to storm forward, but Jeannie Le Sommer was coming back. Stopped by Wendy Renard. Cascarino will try and take this on. 
cool under pressure though the brazilian yeah she does really well doesn't she and cat actually does well to sort of pull out in that position because cascarino gets the better of and if she brings her down there she's in all sorts of trouble but the arsenal defense recover well in the end to make another change, Janice Kaiman. McCabe holds on to it for Arsenal. Here's Ford. Marnham. Ford again in by Catley. Well defended by Leon. They're just not giving them anything at the moment. No, they're defending really well, Leon, and especially in key areas. They're not diving in, they're making it difficult. They're in great defensive shape. Nice play from Marnham to find Ford, who tries to get the ball into the box. Away by Haran, and then Basha can get it forward. Every time the ball goes into the Leon box, it just seems to find that navy blue shirt. It's almost like it's magnetised towards them at the moment. comes the change then and it will be uh, Selma Basha who will make way for uh, Janice Kaiman. Selma Basha playing in a slightly more advanced role today because of uh, Perla Moroni playing in her usual left back position but you can sort of sense that she enjoyed getting forward today. Yeah definitely I think she performed well and the defender in her as well shows that she pressed so well from the front when Leon press. she was normally the one starting off the press and everyone getting up with her when they eventually got it right, Leon. the ball taken away from her by Ford Williamson like Stenius across to Wienreuter Wienreuter looking for that crucial cross Marnham Marnham again and this time too much power on that sees it go wide yeah, she does well to keep the ball alive and if someone's running onto that at the back post it's probably not a bad ball but you see when she turns round the corner it's almost a blind cross she just tries to put it in an area but there's not an Arsenal player near it. They've only used one substitute Arsenal and that was a forced one of course Raffaele coming on for Viviana Miedemark. Yeah I think it's quite strange that one especially when you've you know, you've got quality on the bench that Arsenal have seems interesting but for me just probably says that Arsenal are happy with well I wouldn't say happy but you know with how it is the fact that they will go through if it, it stays like this and no need to, to change and potentially put more players in danger. manager and Sonia Bonpastel she knows uh, all about winning this competition she won it twice with Leon actually captain the side both in 2011 and 2012 
from Arsenal's last match in the uh, Champions League group stages. We'll see them away to Zurich next week, December the 21st, their last game before they play Chelsea in the middle of January. And what a tasty tie that will be in the Women's Super League too. Yeah, it's an absolutely massive game. And, you know, with the, the turn of the year as well, it's, it's a great way to get the WSL back on track after the Christmas break. Well, Mimoj to try to get the ball in. McCabe. You see the frustration there from Kate McCabe and there's been a few fouls now, so no surprise really. I think that's more of an, an accumulation yellow card more than anything, but I think the frustration of the night has just taken its toll there. Well, it would mean a lot to Arsenal if they are able to find an equaliser because they will be confirmed in the first place of Group C if they avoid defeat. But regardless, stays like this. They will be going through. There's Lina Hurtig, who was uh, ready to come on as a substitute, only recently returning in the Arsenal squad and uh, just like that there goes the change Katie McCabe makes way for Lena Hurtig and good to see Lena Hurtig back for Arsenal yeah I watched a, a lot of her at the Euros and in the summer was really impressed by her and, and what she has to give and I think as I say now she she's back fit hopefully she will become more of an integral part of of this Arsenal side and now, especially when you're thinking that with the injury to, to Mida Morrissey, we don't know what exactly what's going on and how long she'll be out for, but you know, vital to, to have a forward player back. Well, straight away, they're trying to get her to get involved, but the ball was a little bit too advantageous for Endler to get it. Yeah, she's very fast, though, Hurtig. Not quite that fast, but <laughs> it's definitely, you know, an outlet for Arsenal to use her pace. There is uh, McKay making her way off. Well, Hertig did score twice, actually, in the Champions League already this season. She scored two goals against Yorick in that 3-1 uh, win, which was her first goals for the club. Sombat. Henri, Kaiman, a little bit of skill to try and get away from Catley, helped out by Ford. Sombat again. You see now Leona just playing the odds, trying to keep the ball in that Arsenal half and final third run down these final few minutes of the game. Le Sommet. Picked up by Hegarola, who will go from distance. It was ambitious, wasn't it? But up 1-0, there's only a few minutes left. It's probably the perfect time to take it on, but almost got too much power behind it, hit it too well, not bothering Zinsberger from there. Referee wanted to play on. Leon didn't. Reynard was down. Now it's that point in the game, isn't it, where they don't want the advantage. They'd rather take the free kick, take their time over it, manage these final moments of the game. A 
Good work from Hertig there to get the ball back. Senius takes a little slip. Henri. Ford. And Kaiman trying to get through by Valti. Just don't know why they're playing the backwards pass there. Catley, she's got the ball going forward. Got to try and find an equaliser in these last couple of minutes and get the ball forward. There's no need for that backward pass. Here's Ford. Mana. And that pass on to uh, Caelan Ford, but seen away by Kaiman. Is there a sense that Arsenal are playing it too safe or is this just patience? I think it's too safe. You, know, you need urgency when there's a minute left in the game, obviously plus the added time. There's no time for patience. Well, the fans inside the stadium certainly want to see more. An opportunity again for Arsenal now, right at the end. Marnum with a delivery, headed away by Reynard, picked up by Hertig. Oh, it's almost found its way through. Good block. Back in by Blackstenius and a save by Endler to deny Arsenal. It's a good save. It's come through a lot of bodies there, Endler. I know it's at her near post, but come through so many bodies there and there was a vital block in there from the Hertig shot. Well, really congested right in front of where Endler has stood to defend this corner. Renard again gets there first. Cascarino will try and send it away. Hertig is there for Arsenal. She's being held back. And it's unbelievable, really. Now, Arsenal showing a bit of urgency, piling balls in the box, getting round the keeper, being aggressive and they're getting joy from it, but it's, it's about 90 minutes too late. Well, they will uh, try their absolute best, Arsenal, to make something from this. Catley and Marnham, the two who have stood over this. The discussions continue between Catley and Marnham. Plenty ready inside the box to take this on. Catley with the delivery, tried to be kept in by Raffaele. Well, Endler is saying it went out. To be honest, I think it's a poor ball. It's slightly overhit. Raffaele does well to, to get to the ball, but I think she makes the most of it. it it's a poor ball, in my opinion. And two players colliding with each other. It's on rear, isn't it? And she's, she'll take that contact. Mind the seconds down, although I do think she looks in a, in a bit of bother. She's not moving. So, Delphine Cascarino's evening is over. She's had a very good game for Leon, as she always does. Such a key player for them. She'll be replaced by Vicky Besho. Yeah, I think, especially in the first half, Cascarino is probably the best player for Leon, trying to make things happen, yes. Probably didn't get the better of Catley too much in the first half, but very good in the second, delivering balls in the box and worked really hard tonight.
Cutley. Is there time for one final push from Arsenal? Marnham tries to weave away past Kaiman. Away by Gilles. Anywhere will do for Leon now. Ford trying to weave away in as well, goes down. Agarola was there. She's given a corner. Big opportunity now for Arsenal, especially the last two corners that created chaos. I wonder if Zinsberger, yep, she's asking to come up. <laughs> well, Zinsberger's in there too. One final chance for Arsenal to try and get an equaliser and seal the top spot. Corner comes in. Reynard gets there first. And there's no time for Besha to get it away because the full-time whistle goes. Well, it was an important victory for Leon, who will have to fight and wait until next week to really seal the deal. But Arsenal are through to the quarter-finals. They'll also have to wait until their final game, match day six, to see just where they stand, whether that's first place or second place. But their job is done. And it all came from that own goal from Frieda Marnham right at the end of the first half, which meant Leon were able to take advantage and find a breakthrough. The full time score Arsenal nil, Leon won. And Arsenal really, right up until the end, didn't really offer too much. No, I think they dominated large periods of of the first half without actually creating anything clear cut. I think they'll be very disappointed with the they're defending in sort of the last three minutes of the of the first half. There was a really good chance for Leon before they scored. So in quick succession, they're uh, giving away a good opportunity and then conceding a goal. Um, and for me, I just find it strange how they waited so long to to maybe be a bit more direct rated to the last three or so minutes to to be more direct and. I understand sort of there's a, there's a process that Arsenal play by and they want to play through the third, but when you're chasing the game, when you need to be urgent, I think they could have started that process slightly earlier, but nonetheless, they know that they've qualified and, and that was the most important thing, but there'll be definitely things that that man there, the Arsenal manager, will be wanting to, to change and, and to improve. Well, Arsenal got themselves through to the uh, quarterfinals. Lyon have still got work to do next week. And the full-time score, Arsenal nil, Lyon won. Kids, want to go out? Yay. Director, what's today's forecast? The weather today is perfect for... Football. Director, we didn't ask... Football. Director... Football.
Give me football. So, football? Declan, no. This is my family. Every World Cup, we all get together. Mate, let's go. Vamos. Karim eats goals for breakfast. Leo, he's one of a kind. With Sunny, everything's brown. Nobody's faster than Hakeem. Serge's style is unbeatable. You can't forget about your West Storms. When football is everything, impossible is nothing. We got a telex that there is a positive doping control. And it concerns player number 10. La creencia esta que dio positivo por cocaína es errada. Que alguien lo, lo pergeñó no me cabe la menor duda. Ahora, ¿quiénes fueron? Créeme que me cortaron las piernas. 